Derek and then talking about some wake and bake. <laughs> Hey, it's 420. So if that's your thing, get down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's a reaction. <laughs> this is funny. All right, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is funny to me. All right, man, let me keep it pushing. This is what I wanted to hear. Okay, a little funny. Big L already in here. No basketball talk today. Shut up, dummy. I started out with basketball, Big L. I'm even going to give you some scores, man. I'm even going to give you a couple scores. I'm even going to give you a couple of scores. All right, thank you all for coming in, man. Again, man, uh, chat room is a little bigger than I'm normally used to. Going through, going through, trying to get a little um, little reaction, man. I'm seeing some stuff here and there. Uh, trying to get a little reaction, man. Forgive me for the pause. Okay, everybody's still tripping. <laughs> From uh, my man, uh, Can't Cheat Death, Texas Ty. <laughs> oh, Texas Ty. What's going on, Ty, man? Appreciate you com coming uh, uh, up on the show. I almost did my intro again. Okay, T, reset, man. Get yourself together. I'm sorry. Give me one second, man. Reset, dude. Reset. Get yourself together. Get yourself together. Reset. Take it back. All right. This is the Doug Stewart Show, hosted by your boy, that ninja. Get it together. From Texas Tide, ninja talking so fast, my speakers are smoking already. I do have a habit of doing that when I get a little excited, man. I hope everything is, um, you know, uh, comprehensible. Man, I got, um... <laughs> I, think I got a couple of um, Man my show has a couple of elements man But I can't necessarily do them man Because of what I'm doing here So I'm kind of doing my show man But I can't do all elements of it Because it just isn't that type of time In this particular format But I am going to try to run my Morning. show Give you a little bit of what Critical I do At the same time failure. appeasing the listeners of Doug Stewart But I think we're one of the same With our common memory now. Oh even on Doug's show my alarm works they don't let them know the blacks can do things like radio, be managers, be police officers, etc. Where Ninja is from, <laughs> the whites only <laughs> the whites only have jobs. I butchered that. Let me try it one more time. They don't let them know the blacks can do things. The blacks. They don't let them know the blacks can do things like radio, be managers, be police officers, etc. Where Ninja is from. Those are white jobs only. Motherfucker. That's actually not true, man. That's actually not true. I normally don't do this, but I'm going to do it for this joker just real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the deflated balls of Tom Brady caressing. Bill Belichick man-hugging for an uncomfortably long time. Tuck rule denying. Deflate gate defending. Videotape destroying. Pocket passer preferring. Alabama roll tide cheering. KRS-1 hating. Lauren Hill hating. Mason Betha fan club president. Grego's trolling ass is on the Doug Stewart show. I almost messed it up again, man. This is not my show. All right, man. Uh, I'm not going to do many of those, man. I had to do it for that joker there. He's just a troll. He puts a lot of effort into it, though. A lot of effort. Uh, from Al Thompson, right, Ninja. Before the stews, I was listening to punk ass Dan Patrick. Whoa. Motherfucker. Great description of him, punk ass. But only because he had Michael Irvin on. That's true. That's true. He did have Michael Irvin, and that opinion was enough to kind of tolerate it. But it was rough for me. I'm, I'm not going to say the names of any of those guys. <laughs> I'm not going to say the names of any of those guys in particular. Sorry for pre-reading the chat and laughing. But, yeah, I listened to a few people, man. But it was really, really, really hard to stomach, man. It was hard to stomach, man. It really was. Uh, one more time from Texas Ty. You can tell Ninja is excited. He's talking twice as fast as he does when he calls in. You know what, Ty? I'll be honest. I was a little at the beginning. I was. I was. True enough. True enough. Oh, wait a minute. Rail Scott says time off equals unemployment in our city. What the hell? Motherfucker. I know you got jokes, real. Now, actually, I know, you know what? After I said it, I thought to myself, that kind of sounded like I was laid off. I wasn't. I wasn't laid off, man. It was actually just a little slow time. So I wasn't laid off, but I feel you. I, I, I feel you, though. Um, let's see here. For my man, uh, Fail Pay, really interested in hearing Ninja's thoughts on Bomani Jones. I think Bomani's show is the closest we're going to get to the stews on radio. Okay, Fail, you know what? That's a pretty good point, man. Let me uh, say this about Bomani's show. Um... He's had shows where he said things and done things where I'm like, okay, man, I can rock with this dude. I'm pretty proud of him. And in the same breath, he's done things where I'm like, damn, he's making sure he keeps his job at the Full Letter Network. But I do think, much like you do, they purposely hired him and kind of told him to do his thing as a 
somewhat of a stew replacement, a two live stews replacement. I do believe that. I do believe that. So I kind of feel where you're coming from. He was kind of their two live stews replacement because obviously they're qualified. Obviously they can get numbers and they're being kept out, you know what I'm saying, of the loop. So that's the thing about it, man. You know, um, true enough, I, I think that Bomani is there for that reason. But just my thoughts on the show, sir, my thoughts on the show. At times, I've listened to a show, and I think, man, this is really good. And I've heard this show before, and I've said to myself, I can't believe that they're allowing him to do this. And my friend was listening to him, and I said, man, they finna fire the hell out of this ninja. He's actually on here telling the truth. But then you hear shows where he'll say things, and I'll be like, damn, Bomani, really? But, you know, actually entertaining. Do I disagree with him sometimes? Yeah, we're human beings. You're supposed to do that. But he said some things that were just, you know, crazy. But it, it's the most, I'll say this, that's the only show on their network that I will check out. I pretty much banned all banned all of their viewing because I don't really care for it. I, I, I banned the hell out of it. And it's just not, um, it's not entertaining to me when before the show comes on, I know what you're going to talk about. So that was my problem. I could predict it, predict what they were going to talk about. I knew it was going to be repetitive. It was going to be negative towards a sort towards a certain element of player, and I just got sick of it, man. I just got sick of it. Uh, I just got sick of it, man. What I do? What I do? What I do? Okay, I'm sorry, man. I'm going through here getting a little reaction, man. It's a lot of chat, man. So forgive me. I might not be able to get to everybody. Um, I'm definitely going to um, take a couple of calls too, man. But right now, this early in the show, I just can't do it. I got to try to get through what I have going right now, man. So uh, to anybody that might be calling through the line, I've seen a couple of calls come through here. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Yeah, okay. I see that. I expected that reaction too. You know, some people don't want to hear the uh, NBA take. I expected a little bit of that, man. <laughs> I expected a little bit of that, but that's cool. Hey, thank everybody for listening to the Doug Stewart Show, man. Cole, so by your boy that ends the day, man. Shout out to Doug Stewart for allowing me to do that. Appreciate it, appreciate it. From Corey, Clay, bad NBA officiating more easily translates into points. Corey, uh, I agree with that 100%. I agree with that 100%. It really can affect the game, man. I know people kind of don't want to hear it, but I think it's um, a disservice to not discuss a factor in the game. You know, it's like an elephant in the room. It's kind of crazy, you know, uh, but I brought it up. I didn't stay on it too long because I know how people are about it. I know how people, you know, hey, man, I've heard this before. It's an old story. But, you know, I think, like, NBA players resting was an old story, but the media talked about it every day. But they never actually discussed that uh, that scandal. So it's, um, I don't know. It, it, it's, uh, it's different. It's different. Oh, uh, yeah, appreciate everybody listening, man, no doubt. Uh, man, it's a lot of damn back and forth in here, man. I see why Doug has such a hard time going through the chat because I, ne- I don't have this chat problem. So as I look through here, I see why he has such a hard time trying to figure out what he wants to listen to. Uh, <laughs> Clay, I got five on it, Davis. <laughs> Just for your name, sir. In honor of 420. That's hysterical. Big L says, you better preach that ninja. Ninja, you better preach. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, Chief Rocker. What's up, Chief Rocker? Chief Rocker says, players are soft. Chief Rock is also a member of the X Squad, and he does a show on WSME. He he's gonna hit you what Mondays? Chief Rock hits you Mondays, 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 Mondays. Twelve. I think I want to say Mondays directly after Doug's show on Monday. Directly after Doug's show on Monday, hitting you with two good hours, man. So shout out to Chief Rocker. Chief Rocker says the players are soft. I disagree, man. I, I think it's, I think it's soft, man. I, I I don't think players are soft. I think it's a result of the rules and the way they let them play. I re- I really do. Uh, from Andre Elam, like that shit James Harden was doing last night, stopping so the players hit in back and get a foul. Get the fuck out of here, sir. You got the first bomb of the day and applause. And applause. Let that bomb go. Andre, man, that's what I hate. Listen to me, sir. I hate that shit. Look, when you're playing ball and you, okay, like like somebody uh passes the ball to somebody. And as he's catching the ball, somebody jumps in front of him and falls on the ground and they call charge. Dude. Motherfucker. That's not basketball, man. That is not basketball. That's garbage. That's not sport. You're not even allowing them to get started. Like you said, James Harden sitting there dribbling and stopping. Somebody runs into him. That crap, dude. Charges are really something I really couldn't. Charges got on my nerves so bad, dude. I hated the. It's basically something for them to do for people that can't defend. 
You can't. You don't have foot speed. You can't keep up with this guy. So you're allowed to jump to the side, catch a shoulder, jump on the ground, and there's a 50-50 shot. They're going to call a damn foul. By the way, which counts as a turnover. So I really would like more specifics when they say a team had turnovers. A lot of times those are charges and off-the-ball fouls by the three-point line that are questionable at best. So no doubt, uh, Andre, man. That's one of the things I can't stand. Rough Buff says it's a combination of the players being soft and the refs. I guess that's more of a equivalent way to say it. You know, I, I think a false equivalence. I think the players can't play aggressive if they don't allow it, man. If they don't allow it, and I think that's what it is. From the angry black man, the rules have affected the game, but the players are very soft now, too. It's a combo deal. Okay, look, man, like, like Doug Stewart says, I don't have all the sense. But, you know, in my opinion, I really think it's more of a result of the rules, and I think we really are a little unfair to the players and putting it all on them as if they make the referees blow fouls inexplicably on one end where somebody gets hit so hard you can hear it from your television screen on the other end somebody bumps his shoulder as he dribbles by and it's a foul there's absolutely no consistency man no consistency oh wait a minute we got my man k3g up in here what's up k3000 K3000 says, big ups to Mike Conley and the team for paying the fine for coach. Not a lot of money, but it shows that the team appreciates the lookout. Exactly, sir. Exactly. That's exactly what it shows. And that's what's important here. That's what's important here, but the media won't necessarily give you that image. Because they want a coach to be quiet. They want a coach to go with the flow. They don't want the league to be questioned. They side with the league, which is why they didn't speak about the scandal because it's not something that the leagues um that the league wanted to promote or even highlight uh boy y'all wild up in here man uh okay for my montana jones now just somebody's leaning on my side montana jones thanks for uh, listening today montana jones media created a myth about the players being soft today you know what i agree i agree and that and that and that bomb is a little biased that bomb is biased because he's agreeing with me sure sure but man, I'm telling you, man, if somebody doesn't allow you to perform the way you want to, it affects the game. I know I go back to this a lot, but the Pistons, man, if you go back and watch those games, the refs just took away their ability to play defense. Once you did that, you couldn't play aggressive. The teams could score. It throws your entire game off. I think that's what happens a lot. I think that's uh, what happens a lot. I really do. From uh, RC, the Dallas Mavericks are still mad at the refs for what happened in the 2006 NBA Finals versus the Heat. And so is Sacramento for what happened in game six of the Western Conference Finals in the Lakers in 2002. I'm giving you a bomb for that, too. Did y'all see that game? Oh, they got screwed. When I tell you the referees gave it to the Sacramento Kings with no Vaseline, no reach around, no consideration, and no apology afterwards. Damn, they got screwed. They blatantly, and I mean blatantly, screwed over Sacramento. One of the many things, man, just over the years is over and over. After a while, my competitive spirit couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, man, this is supposed to be a basketball game, man. It's supposed to be a basketball game. Not a damn, um, it, it just doesn't, it's just not competitive, man. I know a lot of people can shake it off, man, but it's, it, it, it drives me fucking crazy. And the reason why it upsets me is because it made me, not watch a game that I love as much as I used to. That's the reason why I complain about it so much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, from uh, Grego, let me give y'all a lesson on this show. All things black, including jelly beans, Ohio State, and dry foods, and no condiments in that order. Uh, what are you saying, sir? What are you saying? I don't know about that, man. Oh, wait a minute. It's from uh, Sidney Jackson, David Fisdale is the complete opposite of Ron Rivera. You know what? That is a very, very profound statement. Yes, sir. Does Ron Rivera defend Cam Newton, his franchise player, one of the best players in the league, his guy? No, he doesn't defend him for two reasons. He doesn't draft to help him by getting a solid line and getting somebody, uh, and, and not even getting somebody, keeping the weapons you have. He lets everybody leave. Why'd you let Ted Ginn leave last year? I digress. We're not talking about that right now. I'm just saying. Let him keep his weapons, the chemistry, the familiarity. Let him have a line where he can sit back there, pat the ball, and rip the fucking league up like he has every time when he's had time to throw. I don't get it, but great point, sir. 
from Andre Elam once again. They barely got hit in the face or some damn where, and they act like.